Good morning. Welcome to Good Vibes. I'm your host, Lisa Hauk, the hippie chick. I am very excited to have a special guest with me today. Some of you may know her if you've recently been through your CNA classes. Her name is Patricia Laramie. She writes um, textbooks for the CNA schools, and she also does instructional videos on YouTube on her channels for your CNA. So hi, Patricia. Hi, Lisa. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so happy to, to be with you today. We're so glad to have you. Um, why don't you tell our viewers who aren't familiar with you a little bit about what you do? Thanks. Um, I'm an RN and I started teaching CNA programs about 15 years ago. And along the way, I developed some skill sheets and then did some videos for my students. And um, the skill sheets kind of evolved into the textbook and the videos. Uh, we did a couple of different um, editions of them through the years and just got a little bit better and better. And now we're the number one YouTube CNA resource uh, for skills videos. And this has all been kind of a journey. Along the way, I've learned a ton about CNA testing. And uh, what a lot of CNAs don't realize is that just because um, somebody is an RN and they're qualified to teach CNA program doesn't necessarily mean that they know the right content to teach. And what a lot of uh, what a lot of instructors do is they try to create many nurses out of the CNAs, and that really messes you up at test time because that's not really your role. So a lot of instructors overcomplicate this, and I was guilty of that too at the very beginning. Um, you know, you you put in a lot of things that aren't on the test just because you don't really know what the test is all about. Well, along the way, I started to really investigate what the test really entailed. What were they really testing you on? What were the checkpoints? What were the written questions encompassing? Um, and so I refined the program throughout the years, and now it's specific for testing parameters. And it really takes out all of that uh, fluff that instructors sometimes throw in just because they don't know what else to teach. Okay. Um, so it really kind of gets to the meat of the program. And because of that, we have a tremendous pass rate because our students really understand what to expect for the test. Um, so it's kind of evolved over the years. And it, it really started out because I failed. And uh, I, you know, I really like to bring that up as, as an example. You know, the first few classes I taught, I did not have a good pass rate because I was teaching the wrong things simply because I didn't know what was on the test. And that led me on my journey. That's amazing. That's a great story. Thank you for sharing that. You're well, welcome. I really wanted to talk to you today about the CNA profession, about how integral they are in the healthcare system and how important it is to encourage others to come into the profession. Absolutely, and this is one of the things that we're seeing um, kind of on a global scale across the board is that, and the best for, way for me to kind of explain this is, you know, if you ask any CNA, um, you know, are you happy with your workplace? Uh, do you have enough staffing? Very, very, very few of them are gonna say, no, I'm not happy. No, we don't have enough staffing. And, you know, th this is really a problem in every single, um, workplace setting that you find in home care and um, assisted living and nursing homes and hospitals and other settings that, that you might find CNAs working in. But what is unique to me or what the thing that I have found unique in our industry is that um, CNAs in a large part actually create this problem and, and they don't really understand that they're doing this, but it, it really is kind of interesting. And I, I see this um, administrators and um, you know, director of nurses and, and you know, I, I talked to a wide range of people in the industry and, and they're starting to really kind of focus in on this, that, um, you know, every, every CNA will tell you that, you know, they're short staffed and, you know, there's just not enough people to go around and I can't possibly provide the best care. And, and, uh, and trust me, administration knows that, mm -hmm. but there's two problems with this. And uh, it really kind of uh, breaks down into two separate tracks. And the first track is, um, you know, if, if we're successful in getting people to come in, okay, so we, we get new hires, that they're going to be in one of two camps. They're either going to be brand new CNAs right out of the gate that no, you know, current CNA wants to work with because they take too much time to train and they don't <laughs> know what they're doing and they're too slow and nobody really wants to work with a brand new CNA. Or, 
the other type of person that gets hired is somebody that's been in the industry for a while and no but no cna wants to work with those either because you hear all the um well that's not how we do it did it when i came from mm -hmm. and i always do it a different way yeah. and so so even if we are successful in getting cnas you know new hires the culture is such that they're not welcomed I see. So instead of looking at it as an opportunity to be involved in the training of your potential teammates, you know, down the road and really doing a good job and making them feel welcome and establishing a team type of atmosphere, um, the CNAs tend to eat their young. You know, they, they tend to, um, you know, have a, a hostile work environment or, you know, there's cliques established and, and the new people are kind of ostracized. So that's kind of problem number one. You know, the CNAs kind of create this atmosphere. They tell administration, yes, we need more CNAs. We want you to hire more. I'm tired of working short staff. Mm -hmm. But yet the people that are coming in are not really um, being effectively utilized. They're, they're being pushed out. Now, mm -hmm. the second part of this problem is, um, you know, how many CNAs out there, you, you kind of have to do some self-analysis here. How many CNAs out there when a friend or a family member has come up to you and said, hey, I'm thinking about being a CNA, how many of you have actually encouraged that person to go down this career path? Very few. Most CNAs will say, oh, gosh, don't do that. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> you know, there, there's low pay. You know, we're short staffed. It, it's a thankless job. You know, so we talk our, our family members and friends out of, completely out of signing up for a CNA class or, you know, entering the, the CNA profession. Um, and, and we're doing that based on our current uh, dissatisfaction, not thinking long term, hey, we mm -hmm. need to be recruiting as many friends and family as we can to come into the industry because ultimately that helps the the overall short staffing issue that we are complaining right. about. So mm -hmm. we don't like where we're at right now, but we're not doing anything to actively um, help ourselves out. So, you know, and, and every CNA kind of needs to be aware of this. Are we sabotaging our own career field. Mm. So, you know, when you start to look at it in that aspect, um, you start to identify maybe areas where you individually can influence, um, you know, people coming into the industry or people that are, you know, getting a new CNA job, how welcoming are we making them? Because let's face it, if we're telling administration we need new CNAs and administration hires those CNAs and then we're the ones that kick them out the door that make them feel unwelcome, they want to, don't want to come back, um, you know, how effective are we ever going to be at relieving this, this short staffing issue? Right. No, that's wonderful insight. I really appreciate that. Um, what are ways you think we can overcome those obstacles? Do you think it's it starts in the CNA schools? Do you think it well, starts think, at the facility? Yeah, I think that CNA schools are a big part of it. I think that CNAs, um, during training, you you need to, to focus not just on the skills. And, you know, in, in training, we get tunnel, tunnel vision, right? We think, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, I've got this big state test coming up. I've got to know my medical terminology. I've got to know the skill steps. I've got to know this and that. And we really aren't preparing our CNAs for, we're preparing them for the test, but we're not, I don't think we're doing a really good job at, at really preparing them for the workforce, you know, to really understand what, you know, day-to-day -day care is really like. And I think that schools could do a better job of that. So you have realistic expectations of the people coming into the industry. I mm -hmm. think that's number one, we need to start there. But I also think that we need to have a culture shift in the workplace itself. And, um, you know, to, to try to identify um, areas that we can improve. And let's face it, there isn't a single person on this planet when administration comes down and says, you know, hey, we've got too many clicks. You guys need to be more um, understanding and more welcoming of the new people. No CNA in the world is going to listen to that <laughs> uh, because it's coming from administration and they, you know, they, they just they will, you know, close their ranks and, mm. and you're never going to get anywhere. So I think that this really it doesn't need to come from administration. I think this is something that really needs to come directly from the CNAs themselves, that they've got to start to realize that, you know, the, the actions that they're taking are ultimately 
ultimately affecting their happiness in their job. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I'll be the first to admit CNAs are not paid enough. Absolutely. And that's, you know, number one argument. I am, you know, the champion of, you know, CNAs need to get paid more mm -hmm. for doing the job that they do. Um, but on the other hand, you know, we're, we're not going to really achieve that, that pay that we're looking for until we improve our professional standards as well. So, you know, if you want more pay, you really need to be, you, you got to step up your professionalism. And, mm -hmm. you know, that there, there's a whole, I, I could do a whole training on that, you know, making <laughs> sure that, you know, you're, you're really portraying that, that professional image. Um, and I think that, you know, pay will increase, you know, based on how much we can improve, you know, the overall portrayal of the industry. But, but I really think that this really does boil down to the individual CNAs and, mm -hmm. and their ability to self-check, you know, am I really welcoming these new CNAs and whether they're brand new to the industry or just coming from a different uh, workplace, you know, it really does. We, we have to understand that, you know, we're asking administration for more staff. If they give them to us, don't chase them out the door. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that, that we've got to, you know, we really have to work on that. And it can't come from administration because when it comes from administration, trust me, they see it, they know it, but they know that if they come down on CNAs that, you know, CNAs are going to, it's just the, the reaction, you know, you don't know what you're talking about and, and they shut down. Mm -hmm. So I really think this needs to be from a instead of a top down approach, this needs to be from a bottom up approach. And uh, so, you know, every CNA really needs to kind of start to look at what can I do individually to uh, encourage people to get into the CNA industry or nursing in general? And what can I do to be a more welcoming uh, team member when we have a new hire? What can I do to make them more of a team player rather than, uh, you know, getting involved in these cliques and, and um, you know, really ostracizing the new kid. Mm -hmm. You know, I think okay. it, it kind of comes down to compassion. We know oh, as caregivers, we're compassionate people by nature. You wouldn't go into the profession if you weren't. So maybe it's just a matter of looking at it in a different way and saying, I should be showing the same compassion to my coworkers I show to my patients. That's a great way of putting it. And you're absolutely right. And sometimes we forget that the compassion doesn't end at the bedside, mm -hmm. that it really needs to be, you know, kind of an all encompassing and, and that compassion and care really should extend to all parts of your life, you know, whether it's working with your team members or your family or, you know, your, your patients, but yeah, that, that compassion and that care. And I do think that there's a danger too in healthcare. And I've, I've seen, I've experienced it myself you know, where you, you give and give and give and give. And, you know, if you're not getting filled up yourself, if, if you're not getting mm -hmm. passionate care, if nobody's caring for you, you're going to run out of care to give. And sometimes it, it really is as simple as you get so involved in the day to day. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, taking care of Mrs. Jones and Mr. Hopkins and Mr. Davis and Miss. Annie and, you know, doing the same things every day that it becomes routine. And, we no longer focus on what brought us into that healthcare um, arena, you know, that, mm -hmm. that desire to help others. We just kind of get all wrapped up in the day-to-day -day mundane details of providing mm -hmm. that care. And I think that occasionally you really do need to have kind of a gut check, you know, am I, am I still where I need to be? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think everybody would benefit from that. I would benefit from that. Just, you know, an occasional, um, you know, hey, you know, are you here for the right reasons? Are you doing the right thing still? Because um, all of us can fall off track very easily. Oh, and that's so where I think that your annual uh, conference is so important because it really does ignite that spark again. So, um, you know, I, I think that those types of events are super important so that your bucket of care can get refilled. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm trying to talk Patricia into coming to conference and speaking to you all. She's also got a new card game she's developed, which is super fun. And she's going to have that there, I hope. I hope. I'm trying to talk yeah. her into coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm trying to work it into my schedule, but yes, we yeah. have the new card game that, that um, I'm really anxious to get out there and, and show people how it works. And then we have the new flashcards that we've just developed and uh, the new edition of the book just came out and I've got an online program. And um, yeah, we're, we're we're like super, super busy here and I'm getting ready to start a new podcast um, in about six weeks. 
And uh, we're going to be touching on some of these issues too. And, you know, my goal, it really is, I mean, right along these, um, these lines is to be able to fill the bucket of the caregiver as they're trying to provide that care and, and giving it away to everybody, you know, that they come into contact with. Somebody's got to be, you know, giving as what, you know, as you're giving. That mm-hmm. way you, you continue to have that giving spirit. And that's kind of where my podcast is is going to be kind of geared. And that's a lot of what you do here with Good Vibes. Yeah, that's, well. that's the idea of this show is I want the caregivers to take care of themselves so they can take care of their patients. So, yes. Right. Continue to mm-hmm. give. Yeah. So Absolutely. that's awesome. And and that's what really um, drew me to you. I think that, you know, our values are so aligned in that area. So well, I so appreciate you taking time to visit with us today. I know you've got to run because you have, have other obligations, but we so appreciate you taking a little time and I hope we'll get to see you at CNA Fest. And, absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm so, definitely trying to work that in my schedule <laughs> as, as much as I can. And um, it does look good so far. Uh, it does look like I'll be able to make it. So uh, any of you that are looking to uh, to attend a conference that will really help you reignite that spark in caregiving, think about CNA Fest because mm-hmm. it is a very worthwhile conference to attend. Right. And Gary can probably put our little graphic on the bottom of the screen that gives the website, but we have um, registration up right now. So you can register and say, yes, I'm coming. For members of NACA, it's $425. For non-members, it's $500. But since our membership is only $30 a year, you actually save money by getting the membership and doing the $425 for conference. So, absolutely. And right now we have a promotion that just started on the first where you get this cool t-shirt that talks about your legacy. And uh, so you get your t-shirt with the membership. And so I encourage you to go out and look at that. And Gary will put that graphic up. But um, Miss Laramie, we will talk to you soon. And thanks for being with us. And until next. Well, thank you. Thank yep. you for having me, Lisa. It's been a lot of fun. And um, uh, I'd love to come to conference and hope to see you there. Okay, great. Thanks so much. All right, everybody. So CNA Fest, as I said, the the registration is up. We have the club accounts up so you can pay a little bit each week toward your registration. Um, So just go fill those things out and start paying into your accounts. And then we will see you in August. So until next week, peace out. Mm